Welcome back. We are going to see what's underneath the paintings. I have no idea. I was not planning to make it a cliffhanger in the, the last episode, but I had to do it. Apologies, but we're here now. Let's uncover this thing. Now that we know he is a forger. Makes it much more interesting. This... I should just go get my stylus, but I refuse. This is still kind of interesting though, I like it. It's cool. Wait a second. Okay, I guess I missed a little bit somewhere. Would be better with the stylus. It looks like... I mean, do I even need to say it? I know it's been a while since I played the rest of the game. Where's the part that I'm missing? Like, that I... Where's the part that I need? Oh, there we go. That's it? Let's print this out. It's been a while since I played the earlier cases, but, I mean... You know, there's like a man playing the guitar on fire on a platform. What? What the heck? Wow, he really blows! The finished painting isn't anything like the rough! Devices like mine didn't exist until recently. He probably thought he could draw any sort of thing he wanted to for the rough. What do you mean? Well, in the past, you could only analyze the composition of a rough sketch. Composition? In other words, the traces of charcoal between paint and canvas, so you could tell if there had been a rough sketch. But not what it looked like. I think I follow you. So, in essence, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished painting. Some pros would actually paint out a rough sketch entirely, then do a completely new painting on top of that. So Mr. Misham was drawing whatever he wanted before painting over them? Possibly. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about the sketch itself is kind of odd. You're awfully silent all of a sudden, Apollo. You think we could check out one of the other paintings? Well, sure. You like this detection stuff, don't you? Okay, let's do this one. Um, yeah, that's weird. I mean, I know there's going to be a connection between this case and uh, Kristoff and the Magicians, and, you know, that case did involve Kristoff's brother and Valen Grimari, so I don't know why that would be underneath his painting, but whatever. This is, uh, maybe these other ones are going to connect some more dots. Let's see. It looks like... Okay, there's a house. It looks like a house surrounded by trees, I guess, is what it kind of looks like. Wait a minute, what the fuck? God damn it, this is a pain in the ass. I keep missing tiny little bits. It'd be better if I had a stylus, I could just go get one. Like, does it really have to be perfect? Absolutely perfect in every way? Come on now. Like, what am I... It, it beeps. What am I missing? Okay, there. Okay, let's print this one out. It's the, it's the stand! What... It's the dude pulling the stand. What? What does that... What's wrong, Apollo? You look so serious all of a sudden. Uh, you think I could just look at the last of these? Fine by me, knock yourself out. Yeah, what the... Is, is it gonna be the goddamn poker game? From case one? Like, what... What does this mean? How does this guy have paintings of my cases? Why? What the hell? This is gonna be from case one. What? That just throws a... That throw a... That's a curveball right there. Holy shit. Like, what? Is... This guy's painting my life? What? Yep, look, it's fucking cards. What does this mean? This is not what I expected. Okay, let's print this one out. Look at that. What? What the heck is all this? 
I hesitate to ask why you're getting so excited. You sure your device isn't la leaking some kind of strange radiation? Trucy, look at these three sketches. Do you notice anything? Yeah, a little bit. Case one, and two, and a three. Ah! There. Now you're both white as sheets. What's going on? These sketches are of the three cases I worked on. What? The murder in the poker room at the Borscht Bowl Club. Can we get Olga back? I liked her. The dead man pulling the noodle stand. And then... The events that transpired during the Gaviner's concert. What could it mean? How could he have painted those things? And why? That's what I want to know. Wait, is Drew Misham... Your father? What?! No! Give me a break. Does that even seem remotely possible to you? I mean, it could be possible, it's just not likely. I hadn't even seen a picture of him. But there were my cases, drawn on his canvas. Every single one of them. It couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who was this Drew Misham? And what did he have to do with me? That's a weird one. Uh, I don't know what that means at all. I know nothing going into this. Shit. Here we go, though. She has not said anything. She had a glove. So you're Vera, right? I'm Trucy. Trucy, right? That's right with a W. Uh, but not right, right? Uh, we're on your side. She did say a little bit, I remember, yeah. You can tell us anything, please. Good morning. She... she speaks! Not bad, not bad. But I think you'd do better with a little smile, you know? You're so pretty, you need to sell yourself, you know? Jersey, let's take it easy for starters. Uh, thank you for taking my case. You're welcome. Okay, well, that's a start, I guess. There she goes with the nail polish again. That's right, it was nail polish. That's great, really. It's so cultured. Hello? Want to try? Ooh, really? <sighs> dang girl. Th those dang girls. Always ruining our fun, getting their cooties everywhere. No girls allowed, man. It's ridiculous. They even let a girl be an attorney. You see that shit? Franziska? Like, what is it? They let, they let them have jobs? Fucking weird, man. The victim, Drew Misham, was a forger. And a stolen painting was found in his studio. A life of crime, really. And maybe one that led to his death. Here we go. Well, we will now, uh, <clears throat> begin the, uh, trial of v v v Vera Misham. What is going on with the judge? Is the judge okay? His voice is all raspy. He's looking around all nervous-like. Is he sick? Did he catch the disease from that kid in the hospital? Uh, ahem. The repercussions of today's trial will most likely be felt for a long time. Is it just because of the jury thing? And may indeed alter our legal system forever. Yeah. Today is a test of the jurist system, and the first step toward a new order in our courts. Daddy's secret mission. The jurists will function like a jury. It is hoped their inclusion will help the courts to better reflect the people's will. Why aren't there any jurists in the courtroom? Three closed-circuit cameras watch this courtroom at all times. The jurists have access to everything that transpires. Jurists judge well and judge cool. Now, see here, Prosecutor Gavin. I was going to say that. Ah, uh, my apologies, Air Judge. Ahem, jurist today, uh, judge today's trial coolly if you would be so kind. The jurists are unbound by the letter of the law. They don't affect the trial with evidence, but by their feelings. And we're about to find out just what effect they're going to have. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin, the details of the case if you would. The victim is the painter Drew Misham. He was killed in his own studio. His coffee was poisoned, by whom, you ask? by none other than the defendant, Vera Misham. There wasn't any poison in the coffee. 
Ah Tung, someone has been doing their homework. Indeed, poison was not present in the coffee, but on the mug itself. The mug? Our residue was found on the rim, I see. The autopsy report describes the manner of our victim's death. The court accepts this as evidence. I'll have to check that myself. In fact, I'll do it right now. Etroquinine poisoning, 9 to 9.30. Age 52, October 6. Okay, there's nothing else to it. The victim's death was caused by etroquinine poisoning. A chemical compound that does not occur naturally. Lethal dosage is a mere 0 0.002 milligrams. A touch of etroquinine in the body is the touch of the reaper's scythe. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin, you may present your witness. I have for you today a simple man for a simple case. A man who witnessed the murder in its entirety. A journalist, no doubt. The witness will state his name and occupation. Oh god, ew. Alright! Well, for starters, my name's Spark Brushel. My job is a lone observer of the world. In other words, a freelance journalist, right? Ahem! If you don't mind, I'd like to state something here for the record. Yes, Mr. Brushel? I dislike conclusions, specifically the jumping to aspect of conclusions. Preconceptions make park sandbox of endless desert waste, end quote. But you are a journalist. You said so yourself yesterday. Well, that's true, yes. But you must understand, I stand before you today, a man with a dream. I'm offering you my testimony in exchange for exclusive rights to the story. Scoop turns Mr. Brushel into that Mr. Brushel, end quote. Let's hear your testimony then, shall we? A simple case, eh, Gavin? For me, the jury is still out. It's not a simple case when this man has been stalking my life. I visited the studio around 9 that night to do the interview. The first outsider to enter the atelier. Journalistic history made, end quote. His daughter brought us coffee right after we started. And you know what happened next. Star Falls, end quote. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. Uh, that does sound like a simple case. Unless you were the one who poisoned him. What? What, what are you saying? Judge! Um, uh -huh. need I remind you the cameras are rolling today? I felt the need to be a bit dramatic. You didn't do it, did you? Ma -ma 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 me do it like that? Come on! That's like... Newsmaker making the news, end quote. Or even contemporary witch hunt, end quote. I know, wild accusations, rock courtroom, end quote. <laughs> rock indeed. Prosecutor Gavin sure looks like he's having fun. I'm so happy for him. Somebody has to. Very well, Mr. Justice, your cross-examination, please. Let's go. He arrived at nine. Nine that night? Isn't that a little late for an interview? If the great painter Drew Misham says come at nine, believe you me, I go at nine. The first, and as it turned out, last interview with such a prolific painter. Right, can you tell us what it was like when you arrived? Probably not important, but I'll press it anyway. You were the first reporter ever in Drew's studio. Posterity will look back on that night as a turning point in journalistic history. A basically insignificant step for all mankind, but a giant step for that Russell guy, end quote. If no one on the outside ever had access to the studio, then it would serve to a reason the deed was done by an insider, by which he means Vera did it. So, how did this epic-making interview go? Would you mind being a little more specific? Oh, wee, let me tell you, I enjoy a cuppa. In fact, it all began when I was in third grade. No, wait, fourth grade. That's not what I meant. I believe I know what Air Forehead is driving at. This coffee the victim was served. Did anyone other than the defendant touch it? Right, that. That's what I was going to say. Really. Well, now, if you've got a question to ask it, you'd best straight up ask it. That's what I tell all the new recruits, several times if necessary. Right for a grade schooler. That's my motto. Okay. Which isn't to say I can only roll. Yeah, well, all right. Who touched the coffee? Don't know. I was in the back looking at the studio's equipment when she served it. Then how do you know somebody else didn't sneak in there? 
And what happened next? Well, that's probably not important. Can you say that for sure? For sure? Sure! I'm sure. True Studio isn't a big place, kiddo. I'd know if someone else had come in. What if they'd been hiding in there from before? Even if someone had been hiding in the studio, they hardly could have poisoned that mug without anyone noticing. You think I, Spark Brushel, would miss something as obvious as that? No way! He sure makes it sound exciting. I guess that's his job. There's only one moment we need to focus on, really. The moment when Drew Misham died? Exactly. There has to be something there. Okay. Well, there is the one that I skipped and said it's probably not important. What's this about a star falling? Star falls, huh? It's like an old telegram. Send money. Over. Zow! You don't know? That's like a journalism code word! An important personage passes away! A star falls! Get it? But there's no gravity in space, is there? I wouldn't think stars could fall, really. Does this matter? Oh boy! This is good stuff, good stuff! How about star breaks? Nah, lacks punch! I know, I know! Star dies! Nah, lacks imagination! Of course! You could go with Drew dies! Straight, to the point. I like it! I think we need to hear about something a little more substantial. Okay, of course the one I skipped is the important one. Uh, well, he said we need to focus on the moment of death, so I'm gonna choose that one. Um, about when Mr. Misham passed away. Oh boy, what a scene that was! He puts his coffee mug down with a crash, right? Mm, yes, and then? Then the cold finger of death touches his spine! Life's flame sputters and fails! So cold was that touch, he could do naught but tremble uncontrollably. Actually, life's flame is a little tired. Life's river froze over. Yes, that's a go. I think he's starting his article already. Could you describe that a little more simply? Well, as you can imagine, I was pretty surprised. He hit the floor, as they say. Artist's seizure is final performance, end quote. Atroquinine paralyzes the central nervous system. The body arches back like a bow, the limbs tremble, the throat burns. That's quite enough of that. Some of us want to be able to sleep tonight. Oh yeah, well I want details, lots of juicy details. For that you can listen to our last year's hit single, Atroquinine, My Love, by The Gaviners, available at all major music outlets. The point here is that the victim died of atroquinine poisoning. Well, Mr. Justice, how did you find that testimony? Uh, yeah. Well, as an account of the moment of the victim's death, I'd say it's very important. Please add it to the testimony. Very well, the court requests the witness add this to account to his testimony. Why not? Spasms. You say it was definitely death by poison, how can you be so sure? Hey, look, I'm a journalist, I've seen a lot of things. And I've had more than my share of experiences with so-called poisonings. Man eats fishy fish, goes bye-bye, end quote. Food poisoning doesn't count. Should I get him to talk about something else? Uh, it's weird that it says it that way. Like, why not just say missions? But I assume that is the one I should go for. I don't know why I need to ask about brushels. You say Mr. Misham had the coffee, too. But did you actually see him drink the coffee? Of course! He who sees it wins, but he who says it wins bigger. End quote. I live in a man sees dog eat dog and writes about it world, yet. Yet? I guess I can't say I saw him drink it, really. He had one so-called sip, if that. Man puts lips to mug. Drinks? End quote. Hmm. That poison is quite virulent, I hear. My stomach did a so-called somersault. Since I gulped down that coffee without so much as a second glance at it. Wait, maybe something's there. Some kind of so-called trick. Anyone want to venture a guess, for the record? Does this guy have a pause button? Well, Mr. Justice, did you find that testimony valuable? Sure. The victim drank his coffee, then immediately fell over. Oh, yes, yes. You can go to the press with that one. Your Honor, this is a vital piece of information. Please add it to the testimony. Very well, the witness will add this to his testimony. Vital! Right! Just keep adding shit to the testimony. One sip, and then he's dead. And we'll have to learn more about that next time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.